Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in on a little bit of everything with me, your host, Angelica. On this episode, on a little bit of everything with me, we're going to talk about the Big Brother celebrity finale. People complaining about the Amber Alert that happened on February the 14th. Valentine's Day, Razor's new quartz pink line, and the medical medium book. Let's talk about something crazy that happened in Toronto and north of Toronto. There was an Amber Alert that was announced on Thursday, February the 14th. And people started complaining about it because they were woken up, their kids were woken up, etc, etc. And I feel very disgusted of how the people ended up complaining about the situation that was very heartbreaking. So a father and daughter went out for the daughter's birthday and it seems like um they have been divorced and um mother asked to bring the daughter back at a certain time and never did so mother called the police at 7 p.m and uh they started investigating so i guess after so many hours of investigating they do the amber alert which is fantastic and um they were able to find the little girl's body the next day unfortunately early early morning i'm not sure what time it was but she was found dead now everyone who has been um complaining about the ambler it is because they were woken up and this alarm which we all know is very loud and it can get your attention really fast even from a deep sleep well i didn't hear it so i was in such a deep sleep i'm assuming but when I saw the 10 notifications on my phone, it's a serious thing. And it sucks that I wasn't able to hear it, right? Because what if it was a worse situation, like an earthquake or something, and I don't hear it? That's that's a problem. But going back to this story, everyone's complaint about this this alert. And you know what? I don't have children. But it's heartbreaking to see that a little girl was killed by her father and it's so sad and people these days forget about the little things what happens if it was your child for those who are complaining what happens if it was your child your child was missing or your child wasn't home at a certain time and this situation happens to you how are you going to react Probably the same way as that mother reacted and went to the police and the police had to do necessary steps and decided to announce this Amber Alert to get everyone's attention to help out as a community. And for those who are complaining, you have a sick mind and heart. If it was your child, I'm 100% sure you would be reacting the same way. You would want the community to help out. I do not have children, like I said, but I felt like crap the next morning and hearing that that little girl's body was found dead and her father killed her. No remorse on some of these people because they were woken up. Well, guess what, people? The Amber Alert system is not being abused and it's being used for a purpose and an important one. And it frustrates the crap out of me that people had to complain about it. They were saying that the Peel Regional Police in Brampton, which is a city north of Toronto, they received over 50,000 calls of complaints that this Amber Alert was woken up and it was being abused for a situation that wasn't as urgent. So you're telling me... That a little girl who didn't return home at a specific time and a little girl who was missing from her mother and mother did not know what was going on and she got worried and called the police and then she was found dead the next day is not an important situation. Come on, people. This is ridiculous. I don't know what's going on these days, but seriously, this is something that really triggers me and it just makes me really, really upset. I don't, I don't understand. Well, that's my rant. 
Um, this happened Thursday night, February 14th in Toronto and north of GTA. And it just exploded out of nowhere. You can find it on Twitter, of course, using the hashtags um, uh, Amber Alert. And you will see it. And there are the hateful people out there complaining about the alert. And it's so disgusting. And it just breaks my heart. I pray for the family. And um, it's just a horrible situation for that mother. I hope she's able to heal from all of this. And I know it's going to take a long time, but... I hope she can heal. And for those of you who are complaining, you want to think twice because if you're going to be that heartless, karma's going to get you back and the universe is going to get you back. The universe will get you back for being so, so disrespectful and I'm so disgusted by it. And for those who applaud the Amber Alert, the Amber Alert for being in, using it obviously in good use, Let's work together as a community and let's spread the awareness of this situation because this is ridiculous and it's very hurtful. Big brother, big brother, celebrity is finally done. And yes, I'm just going to recap the finale. And I got to say, oh my goodness, I have never, ever, ever ever watch Big Brother in my life. And I know I had friends in high school and college that were so obsessed with Big Brother. And I just like, I never got into it. And I finally watched it because I heard that Natalie Eva Marie, former WWE superstar, was going to be on it. So I was so intrigued to see what she was up to. Because after she left WWE and seeing that she's built this like fashion empire and all this stuff, I just wanted to see her something doing something else. And I think Big Brother was a great opportunity to kind of get to know her a little bit more. And because she's always played the victim on WWE, so it was nice to see her in a different setting. But holy crap, the final five was Gina, Lolo, Candy, Tamar, and Ricky. And there's a lot of celebrities that I've heard their names of, but didn't really know who they were. It was interesting to to really get to see them in the Big Brother. And like most of them said, um, you get to see those people for who they are, opposed to just seeing the headlines. Um, but, oh my god, so that episode starts off Tamar being afraid of heights of doing the competition. And, of course, Dina, who's been making it far, <laughs> making it far... She says, why aren't they sticking? Like, girlfriend, did you not hear the instructions? She made me laugh, honestly. And all of a sudden, Tamar kicks in that she's not afraid of heights anymore. And Ricky becomes the head of HOH. Candy feels like she's not going to, she's going to be on the chopping block. And it's, she's been on the chopping block so many times. It's pretty crazy. I hope she's, you know, broken records. And the nomination story, uh, ceremony, sorry. (laughs) The nomination ceremony is Dina and Candy. So, Ricky says, goodbye, Candy. Because at the end of the day, there was a tie between Dina and Candy. And he basically said, Candy's gotta go. But Tamar and Ricky are teaming up, which I didn't see this coming, but oh my god, I was liking it. And you know what? After seeing Lolo since day one and how so she's so serious and super competitive and she just wants to win, 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 win. I was kind of like, you know what, girl, you got to take it easy. I know it's a game and there's a lot of money that you're playing. And then all of a sudden, it's like she's trying to be so competitive and trying to see who's the next person that she's going to be in alliance with. And it's only the final two. I got to win this. Like, she's got this thing going on of being fierce. And like, I think it was getting too much, to be honest. I, I was just like, well, I hope just Dina makes it far to be at the- uh, to be honest, at this rate, she's been making it by. But the power of veto competition, gotta love Dina for trying, honestly. She's she's so funny to to watch, honestly, she is. 
And then Tamar decides, if I team up with Ricky, I can backdoor Lolo so she can go go-go. That was hilarious. Um, so they announced the competition um, times. And then we notice um, Lolo wins the power veto. Of course, she does hurdles. So it was she was in the game for that. Five minutes and eight seconds. That is crazy. Good for you. And Candy... Indeed, it made me cry when they were trying to speak out about why they should stay. Um, it's crazy how it gets so emotional towards the end because then you're noticing, like, Frey, I've been in the house for so many, almost a month, and you build these great relationships, and all of a sudden it's just it's coming to an end for some of them. So then um, Candy gets voted out, which I think I said that before. But the last HOH competition... The last HOH competition goes to Ricky. And um, honestly, Dina, has she won anything? But it's funny, funny watching her. It was, it really was. Um, honestly, like with Lolo, it's it's a freaking game, girl. I know you're trying to win some money like everyone else is. But you know what? I heard they get paid for the episode. So I don't know what. I know she wants to be that winner, winner, winner. And, you know, it's probably because of her Olympic career and it's how she's so close to winning and then she doesn't get it. But, oh, my gosh, she was getting way too serious. And I just, I can't handle her right now. But I can't believe Dina made it so far. I was, like, impressed with her. And um, her attitude was amazing um, when she, when her and uh, Lolo um, were evicted. And um, Dina's attitude really, you know, made me like her even more because she was just like, I don't care. I made it this far. And then you got Lolo's just like, well, you know, Ricky, we made an alliance and there was a deal. And I knew that, you know, he said he was going to take me there, but he didn't. And I don't think I can be friends with him anymore after the game. Like, really? It's a fucking game. Of course, he's going to have to make the decision to see who's gonna take it and then if he's gonna win it like hello it's it's just a game and you're telling me you can't be friends with someone because of the promises or all this stuff that he's made i'm pretty sure if i was in the bring brother house i had to think strategy of how to win the game and then obviously hey after the game what's up sorry i put you on the chopping block 10 times but You know, I still want to have coffee with you and actually build a lifetime relationship. But clearly, Lolo cannot even take a game. It's just, it's so crazy. Um, But towards the end, we get to see all the house, former house guests come back. And um, it was nice to see them all together. And, um, you know, Keto trying to be funny. And um, they announced the winner and it's Tamar. Tamar wins it. And I... I almost got emotional there. I was like, what? And then Ricky's wife from the audience, she just wanted to hug her husband because, you know, it's been friggin' almost a month. I would be too. And it was so sweet to see that. And it was really nice. And it was pretty emotional. Um, never watched Big Brother in my life. <laughs> this is definitely a first time. And I was just like, wow. It's it's interesting to see different characters, um, different characters, different celebrities in a different setting, in a different format and kind of just, you know, playing the game and also trying to build that friendship because, you know, I'm sure they haven't really m- met some of those people in the house and now they're going to become lifetime friends. Um, but of course, America's most favorite house guest, Tom Green. What, what? Shout out to my homeboy. He's the winner, and I'm happy for him. He did deserve it. I actually did not vote for Tom Green, as I should have as a true Canadian. I actually did vote for Natalie Eva Marie because she's, uh, I don't know, I ended up starting to like her because when I see her on Total Divas and when I saw her on wrestling playing the character as a victim that everyone should hate, I was just like, damn, like, oh, Big Brother kind of changed me because... Um, you really got to see her for who she was. So I mean, I'm happy Tom Green won it because he is Canadian and he is funny. So congratulations, Tom Green, and congratulations, Tamara. She won me over since day one. I liked her attitude. I liked the, her personality, personality, and I liked the way she portrayed herself. And it was friggin' awesome watching her. It was hilarious, hilarious, hilarious. Tamar was hilarious. 
Um, the least person that I could say I didn't really like, I'm trying to think here, I think it was Kato. Kato struck me like, mm, buddy, you're kind of weird, but oh, I don't know. He's something else. I really don't know what he's all about. And I think I have to do some more Google research on that. But um, my favorite person I would say was uh, Tamar um, out of the whole season. I do like Natalie, Eva Marie, but Tamar was one of my favorites because um, she was so real. She was fun. She was fun to watch. Honestly, she was super fun. Um, the other least person I would say is Lolo after the her eviction the way she reacted and how she came out she, i think she was the only person out of everyone that got evicted um who took the eviction so seriously while everyone else even including even marie she, they were just like you know hey i made it this far and then let's see who wins it type deal and type of attitude but lolo honestly girl it's just a game like, I don't know. It's just way too serious. It seems like she holds a lot of grudges. I don't know what's up with her game with that, but I wasn't into it. As soon as she was just like, I, I felt like she was going to yell at Julie for some reason. Like, you know, like he could have done this and he could have done that. And I thought I had a deal. And it's like, no. And then you got Dina beside her like, I don't care. I made it this far, and that's all that matters. So, you know what, Lolo, I'm sorry, but I liked her a little bit at the beginning, trying to get to know her, but then she just, you know, changed 360 on me, and I was just like, I can't. I can't deal with her. But, you know, you keep doing your thing. If it works out, it works out. But, yeah, she was just a bit much. Um, Who else was on there? Jonathan. We only wear pink on Wednesdays, um, but yeah, <laughs> first one to be invicted. Um, but everyone else was cool. I really enjoyed everyone else and getting to know them. The Mooch, I really don't know much about him, to be honest. Um, I know in Canada we do have American channels, but I, I, I don't even look at my own news channel, to be honest. But uh, it seemed like he, you know, just like same as the rest of them, pretty cool, but nothing really exciting coming out of that but it was a good twist and plot that they did i didn't know that they do that at big brother anyway so uh overall thoughts on big brother i did enjoy it will i be watching the regular big brother i don't think so i find it me seeing a bunch of celebrities stuck in a house was more intriguing because everyone comes from different per personalities for example like joey lawrence very like clean 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 freak and then you've got um, you know, other personalities blending in together and seeing them how they react with each other. Um, but it's a regular Big Brother, Canada, Canada Big Brother. Sorry, is it? Wow, I don't even know. Big Brother Canada, saying it the uh, wrong way. Um, would I be watching it? I don't think so, unless it's like a celebrity thing. Sure, why not? But um, I'm looking forward to the other Big Brother celebrity, and yeah. That's it for Big Brother, and apparently the new one's coming soon of the regular Big Brother. <laughs> but um, that is my take. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but um, who, those who haven't watched it, so I'm pretty sure you might have already once this uh, podcast gets released. And um, we'll see what else is happening on reality TV. What else can we watch now? What else can we watch? What else can we binge watch? So far, literally on my PVR, I got Counting On. I've got um, My Big Fat Fabulous Life. I have the Lindsay Lohan Beach Club. Um, what else do I got? And unfortunately, I can't watch a lot of the other juicy reality TV because um, it's not aired in Canada. So... I have to somehow find a way and use my cousin's zip code and try to watch the shows. But right now, I don't have much access to reality TV like you guys. Total Bellas, yes, that's another thing on my PVR. And um, that's pretty much it for me. But um, Big Brother was awesome. And we'll see what else is happening in the reality TV world. What did you get for Valentine's Day? I want to know what you guys got for Valentine's Day. Also, did anyone get engaged? Did you start a new relationship? Or was there a horrible breakup? 
but was it for the best? I want to hear about it. I really do. So you guys can DM me on Facebook or on Instagram at a little bit of everything with me. Let's talk about Razor's new line of quartz pink. And everyone who loves pink, everything, you need to check out on Razor.com or at iJustine's YouTube channel as she unboxes the whole entire collection. And I was just like in awe. (laughs) And I was, wow, I need to find out how much this laptop is. And of course, it's going for... um, $1,849.99. $1,849.99. Let's just round it off to 2000 bucks. So what do I love about it? It's because it's quartz pink. It's in a matte finish, which is so beautiful. And it's pink, 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 pink. It does come with a um, Core i7 8th generation processor with four times the performance in gaming, but also content creation. So this would work for people who are um, doing photography, any rendering, graphic design, um, DJ and stuff like that. So it can handle it. Also, it's got a 4K resolution, 13.3 display. And the new Razer Chroma keyboard, which is awesome. And you can customize to millions of colors that you like, depending on your mood. And it has um, 13 hours of battery life. So pretty much gives you a full day, which is pretty awesome. And the cool thing about it, they did it as a touchscreen. So that's really awesome. I'm happy that someone else is doing the touchscreen. I know HP did it for a while and um so did um we all we obviously know the surface pro is one of them and i think the yoga book as well so i like it that more companies are getting into the touch screen because sometimes you just want to touch the screen i touch the screen thinking that my macbook does it but no <laughs> ain't touch screen siri's probably laughing at me like ha 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 not touch screen angelica um also <laughs> It's got um, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack because we all know whoever owns an Apple phone or an Apple product, I feel like it's becoming obsolete and we have to use the lightning cable and it really sucks. I hate buying attachments, but I like the phone. So I guess I got no choice, right? To buy the attachments back to this computer because it's so beautiful. Um, it does come with, um, they did like a whole line of it. So two different types of gaming mouses, two types of gaming mice, excuse me. Um, the Huntsman Quartz Pink Keyboard. Um, it does have, they did release a Kraken Quartz Pink, uh, the Razer Base Station, which you can hand your headphones and have four additional USB ports. How awesome is that? And you can get accessories for your headphones. And it could be cat ears. How cute. Um, <laughs> they did release a Siren Quartz Pink uh, mic. You could use it for streaming or for other stuff. Which is so beautiful. Because I'm loving this color. I'm digging it. I know. I'm probably sounding annoying right now. But it's so nice. You really need to check it out for those who love pink. And the uh, Razer released the Goliath Extended Chroma Quartz Pink Mouse Pad and Mouse Mat that they call it. I call it a mouse pad. And it lights up. So the whole perimeter of the mouse pad lights up. So that's pretty sweet. Check it out. Razer.com. It's limited edition. I It's just exclusively sold on their website, which kind of sucks. Because I really wanted to see it in person. But check it out if you're a pink fanatic, a gamer, someone who just loves pink. You don't have to game. This is an awesome computer for everyday use. Probably a little bit too much for everyday use. But maybe you're recording something. Maybe you're doing graphic design. Some photography editing. You guys gotta check this out. Because the quartz pink is only limited edition on Razer.com. Who has heard about the medical medium? I think we all have. It's been all over social media about the celery juice and how it's helped so many people. And you know what? I'm actually going to start doing it because I need extra, extra support 
with my liver. I've had a situation happen to me um, in 2018 regarding my liver. And I've been to the hospital so many times during that time that happened. And they didn't know what it was. They did so many um, tests. I've seen so many doctors and they couldn't find out what the situation was until they sent me to a gastro and liver specialist. And thank God for my naturopath. She has helped me get through most of these situations. And right now we're on the right track. But what intrigued me about this medical medium is because it literally explains how to cure my symptoms and my problems. For example, bloating, eczema, borderline diabetes, fatty liver, weight issues, and SIBO, and fatigue. And what's crazy is that I went from an avid runner, high energy, super fit, to all of a sudden my health has changed 360. And I will talk about it more um, in a future episode. But what I really want to know is who has started this medical medium? What has it done for you? What are the changes you've seen? And what has it helped overall? I want to know your experiences. I want to know your testimonials. I want to know how it's helping you. Because I know for myself, as this being such a personal, personal issue, I just want my body back. I want to be able to run again. I want to be able to have my liver back. I want to be able to get my mental state back when it was when I used to run, when I used to be super fit, when I used to personal train, when I used to run camps and everything. And it, you know, it's, it's crazy how my health has changed 360. And what intrigued me about the medical medium is because there's so many positive, positive, positive changes. And I just want to hear more from it, from the people. And if you are one of those or have heard someone um, with a completely 360 change, Please, I just want to hear it because the liver rescue one that I picked up, like I said, it kind of has all the answers to all my problems and symptoms. And I'm excited to start on this celery juice. I know it's nasty <laughs> the first couple of times, but your body gets used to it. But I need it. I need to add extra. I do have a month until my liver appointment, and my numbers have been coming down a lot because we've done um, more of like the halfway point of it but I really want to get things back on track so whoever out there has read this book and it's giving you positive reviews please let me know dm me on facebook or on instagram I just want to hear it and if you want to be on the show and talk about it let me know and we'll talk about it because I just want to hear your personal stories because that what motivates me and that's what makes me feel like oh my god this is amazing I have to do it too I'm that type of person but I will get started on this book because I think we need to know the basics of how our body works but also more in detail the liver for myself and what needs to get done to do a total reset but I'm I'm super thankful for my natural path and she's done such amazing work and it's crazy how little things in our life can affect us and what she's told me it could be environmental stress it could be work stress it could be just your body being under so much stress and it's crazy how it affects you from the liver from your digestive to your mind and your mental health and how everything interconnects so if one thing's not doing well, it's going to affect the other thing. It's going to affect on the other thing. Just think of it this way. You have lower back problems. What affects your lower back and what's connected? Your knees. And also your lower back connects to your neck. Your neck connects to your head. So you're always going to get pain on your lower back, your neck, and your knees. It's all connects to the same thing. So with the liver and our gastro your stomach and your digestive is pretty much the same thing but also added on to that is the stress 
And it just, it's crazy how science is and it's amazing. I'm trying to fully understand how our body works and how science, you know, how everything connects. I know I'm repeating myself a couple times. It's just I'm trying to gather my thoughts and kind of say, it's crazy. It's just crazy. Your stress, it's going to affect your whole body. And then the way you think, the way you eat, the way your organs um, react to it. So it's fascinating. It's just really fascinating. Like I said, whoever has done this medical medium and has read the books, just DM me your stories. I'll read them out. Um, like I said, on Facebook or on Instagram at a little bit of everything with me. And I'm excited to read and share if you don't mind. Um, cause you know what? I want to do a segment about my liver and how hopefully it can help someone, you know, with symptoms like that, especially with stress. We live in this world where it's, we're always stressed out. We are. And it's true what my naturopath has told me. You need to take time for yourself. I'm that person that thinks about others, but I forget about myself. So now it's, I need to think about myself and that's my goal for 2019. And I need to just focus on myself. So like I said, any awesome stories out there about the medical medium, please let me know. You can DM me and um, I just want to read it. I'm so excited to start this. I feel like this is another boost to have a positive result um, until my next appointment and we'll see how this goes. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and like us on Instagram at a little bit of everything with me. Leave a review and a five star rating on our podcast channel and DM me if you have a specific topic, an event that's happening or a service you would like to promote. And let's connect. Thanks for listening and stay tuned on a new episode on a little bit of everything with me. Thank you.